Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Preparedness Podcast, a podcast that brings you the best in preparedness information. My name is Rob Hannes. I am the host of the podcast. Today is May 20th, 2013. I don't usually give the dates um, because I try to make the podcast as timeless as possible using you know information that you'll be able to listen to, you know, regardless of when you actually hear the podcast or re-listen to the podcast. However, today in Oklahoma, in the suburbs of Oklahoma City, uh, there was a uh, very large tornado that hit. Um, Reports say that it was at least a mile wide and uh, traveled 20 miles on the ground. So it destroyed at least 20 square miles of of uh, of city. Um, right now, there's 51 people that are reported dead. Uh, many of them are children. Uh, I just wanted to mark that as uh, as the event that it is. Uh, I am I am never the one to have the right words to say in, in events like these. I'm, I'm I'm not the person who um, <laughs> knows how to put this into perspective. It's just, uh, one of those events that you, that you look at and, uh, it it renders me speechless quite honestly, but I didn't want to uh, not say anything about it because I think these people at least deserve the recognition of the tragic event that happened. This isn't the first major uh, tornado that's happened in the area. There was one in Joplin, Missouri, which is not too far from um, Oklahoma City. That happened, I think it was two years ago, possibly three now. Um, That also was a massive tornado. This one in the suburbs of of Oklahoma today, the preliminary thinking on this is that it was an EF4, which is... um, Based on the new enhanced Fujita scale, uh, that scale going from zero to five. So um, a very large tornado, very massive in its destruction. Uh, They won't give a final uh, classification of it until they get out and are able to survey the damage. So our hearts and and prayers um, are with these people today. As preppers, this is the type of event that we hope never happens to us, um, but yet it happens to somebody, and it could very well be us the next time. Um, I think all we can do when something like this happens is if we are close by and unaffected to help out as much as possible, as much as we can. And if we aren't, then to uh, learn what we can from it so that we can you know, protect ourselves, protect our family um, from the next disaster that may strike us. There are also um, some deadly tornadoes that happened yesterday on Sunday as well in Oklahoma. And um, the storm system, from what I understand, is still active. Uh, the whole system um, that's causing this is, is still prevalent. And uh, the, there may very well be more of this Um and with all natural disasters or disasters of this magnitude, uh, a lot of times all we can do is hope for the best, prepare as best as possible, and um, deal with whatever whatever comes our way. So our, uh, our feelings and our best wishes to everybody in Oklahoma. For the remainder of the podcast, uh, I'm going to play an interview that I, that I did with Brian and Darren Payne. They are the organizers for the Prepare to Endure Preparedness Expo that's happening uh, next month, June 8th and 9th. And uh, I wanted to talk to them and find out more information about them and about how they decided to put on the expo and uh, what we can look forward to. Um, And I'm going to play that in in a uh, couple minutes here. I want to welcome a new sponsor, CampingSurvival.com. You've heard me talk about 
uh, the Camping Survival website. Uh, I even uh, introduced you to Tom, the owner of CampingSurvival.com. Um, great guy, and I love his website because he's got all this great little stuff that you can you can look through and and find solutions for your preparedness plan. And one of the things that uh, is new that he introduced is an item um, that's called the Tinder Hotbox Solar Fire Starter. Um, he just released this, uh, I think it was today, actually. Uh, it, this is actually a really cool item. I like this item because it allows you to start fire from a renewable source. Uh, there's no matches. There's no spark. There is uh, no fuel that you need to worry about. You can reuse it over and over and over again, and you don't have to worry about consuming the item or having it wear out. This device is a small parabolic dish, uh, highly polished so that it reflects the sun into uh, a focused point. And that point um, is where you can attach tinder to the uh, the standoff clip that you attach to the center of this parabolic mirror. And, uh, you know, it focuses the sun on there and it heats it up and it, it allows it to start smoking, which then you can use to make fire. It's a great concept because you don't have to worry about anything wearing out or, or whatever. It comes in uh, a small metal cylinder. It's watertight, so you can carry tinder inside and not have to worry about the tinder getting wet. And uh, the top part of the cylinder is uh, flat and shiny. I don't. It's not a mirror. I don't think it's a mirror. It doesn't look like a mirror from the from the pictures. But um, in the video, it shows them using it as a signal mirror. So you have. Uh, the ability to carry and keep tinder dry. You can start it using the power of the sun and you can signal for help um, with the top part of the case. It's a great concept and you can check out all the information about it and watch the video uh, at the Camping Survival website. And I'll have a link directly to this page in the show notes. All right, let's go ahead and bring on Brian and Darren. Uh, on the uh, Skype line with me, is uh, Brian and Darren Payne. Uh, they have a company called Pioneer Productions, and they're the ones who are putting on the Prepare to Endure Emergency Preparedness Expo that is happening next month. And I wanted to bring them on and talk about the expo, uh, talk about kind of where they're coming from and why they decided to put on an expo. And, and uh, I think it's going to be a really good interview. So, Brian, Darren, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for uh, taking the time to be with me today. Yeah, we appreciate Thanks, you having us. We're really excited to talk to you and have you on our show as well. Yeah, absolutely. So let's um, let's let's talk about the expo. It's in Bakersfield. Now, I have a few friends in California who are preppers, and um, so I know there are some out there. But I think a lot of people view California as like this this no man's land for preppers and pro gunners. Um, so, what is the current atmosphere and perception, or um, about the people who are living there towards prepping? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and we see a lot of the same thing uh, just by the, the people that we're talking to. But um, out here in uh, Kern County, we've got a, uh, a sheriff who is uh, pro Second Amendment. And he's, he's issuing more CCWs in, in his county than the entire state of California combined. So he is definitely a huge Second Amendment supporter and, um, you know, I think the Kern County residents are, are taking advantage of that. And I think everybody's safer, uh, because of that. Um, number two, we have, um, probably about, I don't know, I think it's about 5 million people within two hours driving distance between, um, Kern County within Fresno County, Ventura County, uh, Los Angeles County, and even in the Inland Empire. And, Bakersfield's really centrally located, um, so it, it would just take a, a, somebody getting in the car two hours and they're up for the show. Um, third, we've got something called Cal Guns, and Cal Guns is wildly popular, and um, there are um, there are tons of members of people uh, just seeking this type of information, and I gotta I gotta say the welcome that we've received. And the interest and the outpouring of support that we've got, that we've gotten after launching this event is totally overwhelming. Um, we see it in the in the online ticket sales. We see it in the pre-registrations for our classes, and um, 
just going around town. We're quite the buzz right now. So the event's June 8th and 9th. So we're hoping that, that people are going to get up to Bakersfield. Okay, so it's June 8th and 9th, uh, which is next month. Now, I don't know if you've got the podcast where I'm saying it's the first weekend of June, which is not correct. It's actually the second weekend of June. Well, that's great. You've got a good response. Now, it is... Um, I know that they keep trying to shut down the gun shows out there. I, I don't, since I don't live out there, I don't pay close attention. Um, what kind of feedback have you received from uh, potential people or people who are showing an interest? In this, or what kind of stuff are they preparing for? Well, I mean, we could. You definitely mentioned earthquakes, but let me back up. You did mention um, gun shows, and I can address that. Um, in fact, our show is adjacent um, a gun show. So we're uh, across from the courtyard is a, uh, is a mature gun show that's, that they do five a year. So in building two is going to be a gun show and building three is going to be the preparedness expo. So this is going to be, uh, this is definitely going to be a, a huge event. Oh, that's um, great. That sounds, yeah. I mean, that you, a lot of people don't hear about the show. I mean, I, I'm in tune to some stuff and I, I find, you know, I didn't know this gun show was here or I didn't know this was happening here and stuff. So even people who are interested may not have heard so that if they go to the show, the gun show, and suddenly there is this preparedness expo, I mean, that's awesome. They'll be able to just come on over. Absolutely. And, and we're also, uh, I mean, if you, you know how the availability of ammo. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are people lined up, no joke, outside of the fairgrounds. Um, all the way down and probably uh, over a quarter mile long just to get in and buy ammo wow. for these gun shows. It's something so, like a three-hour wait. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like a take a number and we'll serve you uh, if we don't run out. That's incredible. I haven't been to one of them out here lately. The last one I was here was – uh, the big SAR shows, uh, small arm review in, in December. Right, right. And uh, that was that was huge as well. Um, but, you know, I imagine they're packed because you can't get ammo hardly anywhere. Now, I have to admit, I'm a little, little self-bragging here. I, I'm not in the market for ammo. I've actually bought all my ammo when it was cheaper. So um, yeah. that's one of the things about preparing that I can say, oh, good, I actually did something right for a change. <laughs> as opposed to you know panicking for for whatever because I know I echo that and and it was so funny because uh, my wife we at one one point we were receiving I don't know a, a couple of a week of these you know huge uh, really really heavy small boxes with a uh, an explosive marker on it and the UPS guys like what are you guys doing what what's in here and she, and she's she's like well you know a little embarrassed sort of like well you know it's ammo she, and he goes well geez I know where to I know where to come now so that made me a little nervous but uh but yes honey. I mean <laughs> yeah exactly honey let's just um let's call it uh uh something else right let's call yeah. it paper clips although it's hard to get around that because they stamp the you know the big old right. explosive uh, excuse me big old explosive sticker right on there which they do is huge like it's just like um, all the hubbub they make about having guns in an airport or traveling with the guns through the airport on the planes and stuff and then when you go to check your gun they put this big old sticker on that says firearm inside <laughs> and I'm like are, aren't we kind of defeating the purpose of not scaring people let alone you know uh, everybody that gets to handle my bag knows that gee this is the bag you're going to want to break into yeah. oh I hope we don't start talking about TSA no I don't want to get into TSA but, <laughs> but you brought up but the wife and ammunition and I just wanted to say that I have been tuning my own home to my wife I'm like gee have you noticed I haven't really been pining for ammo have you noticed I really haven't said gee honey how much how much can we take out for ammo this have you noticed that hun she's like well sorta yeah well this is what I'm talking about you know when you were back there saying why do we need to buy all this ammo why do oh you're buying more ammo really you're buying more ammo well guess right. what I don't have to worry about the ammo now I you think know? our wives must talk, and and that's exactly true because I did the same thing, and and I said, well, honey, I promise there will be a day where this stuff will be hard to get, and it probably won't be too hard. All it takes is one or two bills to pass, and you know you're going to get a run on it, just like, you know, if, what was that when uh, Fukushima people couldn't get the uh, potassium iodide pills, or it's like, okay, we we got to go get we got to go get it now, just because it's there might be, um, you know. Uh, lessening supplies so yeah, yeah well anyway. that's the point of, well of being prepared is 
is being prepared before something happens because we're not panickers. We're preparers. So we need to make sure that, that when we think there's an issue, we need to prepare for it. And that's, that's one of the things I'm really trying to drive home on the podcast lately is I know it's tough. I know the economy isn't the greatest. I know that funds might be tight, but you really need to push forward every month or even every week, chip away at your your plan, you know, put a little bit away um, from your budget towards preps and make sure that you keep in a, a forward moving motion in your preparedness. Because when it happens, if you don't have it, it's going to be too late. I mean, look at when we had that pandemic scare and people were going out and buying all sorts of, you know, masks and, and Lysol and stuff. Right. Um, when we had the Fukushima scare and people couldn't get the potassium iodide or iodate because there's only so much that they have in stock at any one time and they can sell out in a matter of hours. And in fact, that's what we see happening often. So, uh, yeah, now I have to say just so it doesn't sound too one-sided, my wife is completely pro preparedness and, and she's totally on board with it, but she is, we'll say the, the saner, two of the two here <laughs> you know she she's the one that does prevent us from from spending all the money on preps which i think is a good thing we need that that voice agreed so all right what um, what kind of uh vendors what can we expect at the show what can we, what can people expect to see um when they go there yeah i'll take this one the show is really uh it's an educational event at its core uh, we want families uh, the community at large and individuals be as prepared as possible. So we've got over 15 speakers, uh, a lot of uh, classes as well to uh, really get the in-depth knowledge and instruction that people are looking for, and then over 50 vendors as well to be offering the latest in gear and supplies, uh, food storage, uh, water filtration. Uh, We've got um, a lot of uh, medical kits, uh, tactical-related items. It runs the gamut of what you're looking for from education to products. Um, and but there's going to be a lot of uh, family folks events. The fire department's going to be there. They'll have a fire truck out for kids to play on. The uh, apple seed project, the Boy Scouts. Um, we want to encompass everyone as much as we can. That's great. Um, I know I'm well, as I had mentioned on the podcast to my listeners, I'm going to be there. I've got a couple classes uh, on surviving EMP. Uh, what are some of the other classes that uh, you've got going on uh, for the show? And um, you're taking pre-registration forms, so can you um, tell us how people can register and uh, that process and why they should pre-register and stuff like that? I'll talk about the registration process, and you can talk about the classes themselves. So to register, um, go to the website, which is preparetoendure.com, and uh, you can go to the tab called Classes, and on the Classes – uh, you would scroll down. Now, these are all free classes with the purchase of a wristband. And there is one one class that I highly recommend but does cost a little extra. And that is, of course, the um, crisis wound management course. Uh, this is taught by Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy. And uh, this is a course in suturing and stapling. They teach you which wounds to close, which wounds not to close. Um, and... Um, they uh, will also, you know, they procure a pig's foot and, and surgical instruments where you can actually practice tying sutures and closing a wound. Um, and then they come around and, and uh, they really give you the kind of the personal attention. They're very um, specific and say we'll only accept uh, 20 people. Uh, maybe it's 20 or 25, I forget, but they are very insistent on limiting the class size. This is not, you know, just a, a fill a huge room. Um, they will come around individually, make sure you're doing it correct, and make sure you get uh, the information um, that you're paying to get. Darren, do you want to hit some of the other classes? Yeah, well, we have a large variety to choose from. The rest of these are all free, um, and they range, uh, quite a big range. Survival and Hostile Terrain. Following a catastrophic event, uh, this is led by uh, Stanton Lee. Uh, he runs a, uh, a school out uh, in our our neck of the woods where it you know it helps people uh, be ready for you know say whether it's a riot, a dollar collapse, or whatever the uh, scenario is where you're in a situation you don't want to be in. There you know, maybe there's no electricity, there's rioting, there's uh, danger coming from every corner, and and he kind of prepares you for that, what to think about, what to be ready for. 
Um, another exciting quote from Christer, Christopher Nurgis. He's a local out here in California. He's been on a, a lot of TV shows. Uh, the media loves him, but he'll be giving a course on survival skills, fire making, uh, creating shelter, safe water, wild foods, um, and that's with the, the help of very little. You know, you've got a, a pocket knife and a lighter maybe, <laughs> or maybe not even that. You know, how to survive with, with nothing. Uh, you may have heard of Lisa Bedford. Uh, she has a really popular website, the survivalmom.com. Yeah, she, she lives out uh, out this way. Oh, okay. Well, she's going to be there too. Um, and I appreciate her uh, her point of view. Um, you know, getting the – so many men kind of take the role as the, the prepper and the um, – they just kind of it, that role tends to suit them a little bit easier than women, and I really appreciate appreciate what she brings because she has that uh, the women, the wife, the mother's perspective. Um, it is a scary situation um, or a scary thing to imagine. Uh, no electricity, rioting, you just in general your life being in danger, and so many people uh, just phase it out. That will never happen to us. Um, so it's great to hear from from her perspective. Yeah, I love what Lisa's doing because, like you said, preparedness and survival aspects for the family are largely, at least what I see, is uh, is male. I don't, I don't know if it's male dominated, but there is a lot of men who are into it. And I think that Lisa is basically out there saying, "Hey, women, you know, this is something you should be." interested as well this is something you should be focusing on and it's not just um something that is a wackadoodle thought of your husband's this is something that's serious and and so uh i think i think she's doing great so that's good to see she'll be out there too yeah and there's there's one thing i wanted to talk about regarding that um so i'm taking the pre-registrations and i'm i'm looking at the um the registration list and there there are as many women as there are men. And one also thing that's really unique is that I've noticed that there's a lot of couples doing it together. Anytime I see, you know, most of the time when I see a guy's name come through, I see the, the wife's name come through right next, right behind it. So they're getting their wives involved. This is not, if it's male dominated or macho, you know, I think those days are over and I think Lisa's really helping to, to kind of convey that message that this is not, you know, it's, it, it's not just leave it up to uh, dad or leave it up to the husband. You know, we're not mowing lawns. We're not, you know, taking out trash. This is, this is our, the survival of our family. So women are getting involved. Mothers are getting involved and their wives are getting involved. And um, that list is, I mean, you can't argue with that data. And I was pretty impressed with that. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, like you said, I think it's a good thing that uh, women are getting involved too. And even better, you know, the husband and wife, the girlfriend and boyfriend are together. They're, they're being involved because it is a family issue. It's not just guns and ammo. It's not, you know, running around in woodland camouflage in the woods. It's, it's about, honey, if we have an earthquake or a hurricane or there's a massive flood or w- something happens or I lose my job or we have a loss of income – how do we survive for that period of time? I mean, we're seeing the government isn't really able to come to our individual aid. I mean, they may have some aid stations, and it may take four or five, ten days before they get here. How do we how do we protect ourselves? And I think this uh, recession that we went through really opened up a lot of people's eyes to the frailty of the system, and that frailty can either be uh, the infrastructure as far as, you know, a trucker strike, because uh, I don't know about the rest of the country, but I know here in the southwest we've had a couple strikes and a couple of um, gas issues where we didn't have a fuel supply. Uh, it was very, very touch and go for a while. Um, we've had that a couple times on the past few years. Uh, the economy having the effect on uh, – families' incomes and stuff, and, and I think it's really been an eye-opener, and it is uh, it's very good to see that this has become a family thing, not just a, a man or, or woman issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, and I think uh, you know, an important aspect of preparing your family that so many people overlook um, is your pet. You know, we, we have a dog. Uh, my parents have a dog. <laughs> so many families have a dog, but a lot of people just think to be prepared for your pet for an emergency, you have a little bit of extra food, a little bit of water. But um, that's really not the case, and that's why we're excited to have Naomi Flam. Um, She's uh, established an organization called the Central California 
animal disaster team. Um, when any, any of the major hurricanes that have come up uh, recently in the, the news, the tornadoes in Joplin, she flies out to those um, affected areas and helps to rescue animals and, and help families get prepared for the next time something like this happens. So she'll be giving a class on, on how to get pets ready and how to um, you know have man's best friend uh, be with you uh, when you really need him in an emergency. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a vendor. Um, what are they called? Uh, canine survival packs. Is that right, Darren? Um, pet emergency kits, I believe. Yeah, they're okay. on our website. You can see all our vendors. So, so a lot of people are getting involved in in preparing for their pet, and and you know, Rob, it's it's very it goes through a lot of stages, and and for for me, it's it started with. Uh, with guns, you know, because I initially wanted to really kind of protect my family from home invasion and, and, uh, you know, just self-defense. And then uh, from there, it just, it, it layers upon layers upon layers of, uh, of redundancy. And, um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we're, one of the reasons we're doing this event is to really kind of bring it together. Um, bring everybody together all in one place so prepping doesn't have to be so overwhelming because I don't know about you, but when I first started, um, I practically threw up my hands and gave up because, you know, it's very fragmented. You, you, you have to, you know, a lot of it is, it's all based on your own research and you have to, you're online searching for, you know, the right products and everybody has a different take on it. And, um, so, and, and that's kind of like where your, you know, preparedness list is really going to help a lot of people. And, and this is kind of the, the impetus behind this event, uh, as well. Let's bring in some expert, expert speakers. Let's educate our community. Let's, um, you know, bring out a bunch of vendors where people can, uh, they can shop and they can learn about, the latest in preparedness and survival. So it's not so overwhelming. So, so they have a contact list of, of all of the vendors of what, what they need to do because they're, we're not expecting people to come and, and buy everything at the show. Obviously that's impossible. Um, we're hoping to, you know, provide an area of commerce and education where if they want to come in and, and buy some, you know, some long-term foods to store, some water filtration, some tactical gear, um, whatever they need, it's all going to be here. But we've, we're assembling a, a program. It's called the P2E Survival Guide. And that's going to be kind of a, um, a book that they can keep with them. So they'll have a list of our, all of our vendors and our speakers, and they know where to go for uh, this information. So hopefully their road is a lot easier than ours. The guy that you're putting out is going to be great because people will have a resource so when they, they can at some point not have to worry about taking in all the information, they can take it home, they can mull it over at their own time frame. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. And, and uh, we've, got a, we've got a few others. Um, uh, Brett Ball, he's an NRA certified instructor uh, in eight disciplines. Uh, he's bringing out his reloading trailer and – when I say a reloading trailer, he's got eight reloading stations in this trailer. And uh, so he's going to be doing uh, reloading courses. Uh, he's also going to be ta- uh, teaching um, a course called How to Cope in Any Environment, Urban Preparedness and Self-Reliance. So uh, we're excited um, about Brett. He's also got a unique um, take on um, non-lethal uh, self-defense. So he's got kind of a, a laundry list of, of items of, hey, what if you uh, what if you're you're uh, separated from your weapon? You know, what else can you use to um, you know to defend yourself against a, you know attack or or whatnot? So he's got kind of a laundry list there. Which so I'm really looking forward to that that talk. Um, yeah, you know, you're you're saying all these classes going on and. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to make all these classes. No. I wish I could. I'd be like, oh, I want to go see. I mean, just about everything you said, I'm like, oh, I wish I could make it to that one. I wish I could make it to that one. I but know. I'm, I am a, I'm going to have a booth there, and I'm having a friend who's going to help me watch the booth when I'm doing the classes. But I'm wondering right now if I could make him watch the, the booth the entire time while I, I go to all these <laughs> classes. I don't think he's going to go for that, though. 
No, uh, yeah, he may not. Um, and, and trust me, I feel that because as uh, the host, uh, I, I, I probably won't be able to, well, I know I won't be able to spend as much time, uh, if any, in, uh, in the classes that I want to. So I'm looking at a way that we might be able to uh, record these, at least for personal use, but uh, uh, unsure at this point. Um, so do you want to tee up your surviving EMP class, by the way, since we're talking about classes? Sure. Well, um, the surviving EMP course that I'm going to be talking about, and it's a, you've got me scheduled for 90 minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I think that's a good period of time. In fact, we still may run out of time. Um, the last time I gave this presentation, or I should say the last three times I gave this presentation, it was based on an hour, and we always run out of time. So I'm glad to have the 90 minutes. Uh, the first hour is going to be all instruction. Um, it'll be Based on the information that I have in the book, it's going to be talking about why we have a threat, um, what the threats are, um, and actually, you know, going over the fact that these are real threats. These aren't just a bolt out of the blue Russia nukes us or something. These are actually real threats, and it's even if we were to complete peace here on Earth, we would still have a threat from the sun. So uh, we'll cover that. Then we're going to cover in exactly what um, you can do to protect your electronic gear. Uh, we're going to talk about why the uh, the power grid is in danger from, from both the uh, EMP and the coronal mass ejections and how you can go about protecting your gear, how you can very simply with some very uh, non-expensive gear that you can get like at the hardware store or even uh, uh, the grocery store, protect the, the equipment. It's not that difficult, but you do need to do it right. Uh, a lot of people are, are doing it wrong on the Internet, and you can prove this to yourself um, by basically using an AM radio, and uh, we'll be covering that as far as, you know, you can discount a lot of these things that people say. For example, a lot of uh, – or some companies are selling what's called a Faraday bag. It's a, a modern bag with a nice, thick – um, like Ziploc on it, and it's called a Faraday bag. But what they don't specifically tell you is that it's a forensics bag so that when they bust the drug dealer or some other criminal, they take their, their cell phone and they put it in the bag, and then that bag will prevent cell phone signals or signals from 1 gigahertz up from, from reaching the phone. So that phone cannot be uh, remotely wiped, and that's what they want to prevent. It mm -hmm. will not protect against uh, lower frequencies and um, too many people are are thinking that it will because it's called Faraday bag. There's, you know, another thing is uh, microwave ovens or um, window screen boxes or file cabinets. You know, a lot of these people are saying, look, I put my FM radio or I put my, my cell phone in there and I can't call myself. So therefore it's a good Faraday cage and it's not. So we're going to cover a lot of those myths and talk about that. So it'll be about an hour for the class, and then I'm going to take that last half hour for questions because there's always a ton of questions. I bet. Hey, Darren, I'm going to uh, hand you my clipboard because uh, I'm not missing that course. So <laughs> you're going to have to take over for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have you record it for me. <laughs> Actually, I think we've got you teed up for uh, 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 1030 the next day as well. So um, maybe we'll switch off. Yeah, I uh, – um, don't even know when I'm I'm doing this. I don't know there's one Saturday and one Sunday, but I'm I'm going to be there all day. So whenever you whenever I'm scheduled is fine with me. Yeah, it's going to be a great course. Um, who else? We've got uh, Kevin McCartney. He's going to be talking about indigenous snakes and spiders, and then uh, venom treatment, uh, myths versus reality is the type topic of his uh, his talk. So I'm I'm pretty. Uh, you guys are in um, in Arizona, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you guys probably have a lot of the uh, same type of snakes and spiders we do, probably even even bigger and meaner. Um, yeah, we've got – well, we've got both of the big spiders here, the black widow and the brown recluse. We've got mm -hmm. the snakes and we've got scorpions. And, oh, that's um, right. Luckily, you know, there doesn't seem to be all that – I mean, we don't hear tons of cases of people dying from this stuff. So it's not terrible, but at the same time – it's still a threat. You know, I, I would like to make, that's another class I'd like to go because there's so many myths out there. I hear, yes, use the, the suction plunger. No, don't use the suction plunger. Yes, use it. I mean, I don't know what to believe anymore because it seems to change. And again, another class I'd like to go to. Yeah. There's two well, other when, classes that we uh, haven't addressed yet. Um, and I think these, um, these are two of the latest ones that I think they're going to get a lot of attention. 
One of them is by Tom Severin. Uh, he's the uh, president of Badlands Off-Road Adventures, and he's teaching a course on how to make your vehicle into the, the ultimate bug out bag. You know, in a, in a scenario where you would have to leave your house to your um, retreat location, uh, he's going to help you get it set up and prepared ahead of time to, to really get you there uh, quickly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, so I think that's going to get a lot of attention. I'd like to take that one for sure. Um, there's another one, preparing the crash, uh, preparing for the crash of the dollar. I think next to a natural disaster, um, that's probably the, one of the most likely man-made disasters we're going to see. Um, watching, uh, you know, I, I watch Doomsday Preppers um, a bit, even though they, they kind of tend to paint us preppers in a not-so-nice light. Um, however, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> But uh, that, that, you know, almost all those people, that's what they're preparing for. And the more you pay attention to the news, the more you just follow what's going on, that seems to be where the country's heading. And the, the dollar doesn't seem to be in a, a good position. So he's going to go over how to protect your wealth um, going into precious metals and, and other ways. So I think that's a, a really important class to, to consider. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody always wants to know, what are you, what are you preparing for? Um, and, and of course, I mean, the, the basic just sort of emergency preparedness of being, uh, prepared for disaster, like an earthquake. Um, certainly, I mean, that, uh, I think, uh, Bakersfield had an earthquake in 1952 and that earthquake leveled Baker, Bakersfield. Um, and it was a 7.7. You know what a 7.7 would do, um, now in, in Bakersfield? I mean, it, it would be felt all the way down to San Diego, and there would be tons of loss of life. So, uh, l- let alone any type of uh, interruption in um, you know civil society, which uh, really worries me. Um, Bakersfield's right in the floodplain uh, up by in Lake Isabella. If something happens with that dam, you know Bakersfield is in a floodplain. Believe it or not. Um, also, the aqueduct runs California Aqueduct, our water supply. It's open, you know, so you're, you're thinking of, you know, any type of uh, terrorist attack or something like that. It would not be hard to drive up and, you know, just pour something off your back uh, of your truck into the water supply. Um, so and then another thing affecting us is uh, is just water supply. Uh, Bakersfield is highly agricultural. So our farmers are having a very hard time um, just getting the water that they need, and and partly because of the bureaucrats. I mean, there's some sort of smelt, a uh, little minnow that is getting caught up in the uh, delta, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but um, as of I think April, they're only allowed to kill um, maybe 250 of these little stupid little minnows um, it, it, uh, per year. Because there's a big screen, huge screen that will, you know, pump the water to all of our farmers. And then after that, uh, once they hit that 250, and they've already killed 150 as of April. So you can imagine what we're approaching June now. So all of our farmers, they're getting their water supply cut off in the half of half of, um, half of the year is already gone. So yeah, you know that's we, really concerning. Those of us outside of California who hear stories like this, I mean, one of my first uh, reactions is like, seriously? And then my second reaction is like, well, okay, that can't be right because who would actually do that to farmers? I mean, you know, we kind of mm-hmm. need the farmers for food. Um, but, you know, there it is. I mean, that's it's that's this crazy talk. Yeah, it really is. And it it forces them to, you know, take them take the water from – the, the aquifer the w- deep down um, that's and they will grab that but that is finite that will be um, empty at some point looking at your website here I noticed that you've got a page for lights out yes what uh, what is that about I mean I it looks like there's uh, trying to raise money for um, a movie and stuff now I, I read this when it was a, an internet book free to download and stuff. And I, I love this book. So what is going on with uh, Lights Out? It is blowing up. So basically, David Crawford, 
Um, he's out of, um, um, I think he's out of San Antonio. So he's an avid outdoorsman and, and he's been uh, into preparedness for a long time. And he wrote this prepper novel and uh, it is obviously you read it and it is, it's, I think they downloaded over 3 million times. And uh, there's a guy named Travis Fox. Travis is, uh, is, is awesome. And he is a uh, producer and they are, making a film, actually not even one film. They're making a trilogy um, out of David's book. And if you go to lightsoutsaga.com, lightsoutsaga.com, you'll be able to um, read more information about uh, David Travis, the the book itself. Um, We're going to be raffling off four autographed copies of the Lights Out book. But um, David's going to be there signing them and, and selling them at his booth. They're both going to be speaking on stage. So, so and David Crawford is going to be at the expo. He is cool. Awesome. Yeah, it is. It's very cool. It's one of the things that we're really excited about. And, uh, I know it's going to drive a lot of people because a ton of people have read this book and, you know, if, if it's affected you, like it affected me, you know, people are going to come out, um, and people are going to get behind this. They've already raised some money for this. And um, they've got a ton of sponsors. Um, 511 Tactical has been great, um, it, f- uh, not only supporting um, the Lights Out project, but also supporting our show. So, um, you know, Chris over at Lights Out, or Chris over at 511 has been awesome. So they'll be at our show as well. They've got a huge booth. You will not miss them. That's great. Um, I, like I said, I, I read the book, uh, love the book. I actually bought the um, – I think there's a Kindle version. Uh, I bought that yes. just to kind of support. Uh, I want to have the book in its latest form, and I said, you know what, it uh, a little bit on the expensive side, but you know what, I, I wanted to support the independent author, especially for a story I like. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to meeting David. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, so he's going to be on stage I think both days. I know Saturday uh, in the afternoon – uh, but they're going to be there both days, and uh, actually, uh, f- I know Travis will be flying directly uh, overseas uh, to, to be at our show. Very cool. You know, I think I'm going to have to get a life-size cardboard cutout of me, and, uh, <laughs> put it behind my booth, <laughs> when uh, a little a little digital loop just says, hi, thanks for coming, hi, you know, and just that way I don't have to really be at the booth because you've, there, you've got way too much stuff that I want to I wanna see here, so... Well, that's great. Um, what do uh, you have any plans going forward after this for another show or another event or something? I mean, what what can we look forward to after June eighth and ninth? So we've got a few uh, venues that we're looking at. We'd like to do um, a, a few more. Um, I think we're probably going to stick to California at this point. Uh, like Ron Douglas said from the Self Reliance Expo, hey, you you can't be everywhere. You know, you know they've done a great job. I know you've gone to a lot of their uh, self reliance expos. Um, we did a recent podcast with uh, with Colorado Ron and and um, and Bubba there. So uh, those guys have been great and and uh, arguably uh, put on a uh, one of the best shows, if not the best show, um, in the United States. So well, you know, Phoenix yep. really isn't all that far from California. No, probably maybe put one here. We got a lot of preppers here. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So um, we appreciate the uh, the offer. We'll, we might take you up on that. Great. Well, uh, Darren and Brian, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, really great information about what's going to be at the Expo. Uh, before we sign off here, is there anything else that you want to cover that uh, we may have overlooked? Darren, how are you feeling? Um, well, I just want to remind everyone, if you – Hopefully you can make it to the show. If you can't, um, we do have a lot of information, um, articles posted by our speakers, some of our vendors at our website, preparetoendure.com, and we'll be keeping information uh, updated as well, um, you know, up until the show and even throughout the year with, um, you know, new venues, new updates, and we do have an email newsletter as well. Uh, we try to get, you know, preparedness kits out, uh, information about speakers, vendors, uh, whatever we come across. So. It's uh, it's an ongoing process, as everyone knows. Uh, you're never <laughs> you never reach preparedness. You're always working at it. Um, That's right. So yeah, we so, try to make it uh, as easy as possible. And just to get it, give everybody the details, so it is um, Bakersfield, California, 
June 8th and 9th. It's going to be at the Kern County Fairgrounds. Doors open at 9 a.m. That goes to uh, 7 p.m. on Saturday and 5 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, it's $10. Both days are included in that wristband. And there's tons of content. There's tons of expert speakers that are coming all across the United States to come and educate our, uh, our audience. Um, we're donating a portion of the proceeds to the Bakersfield Wounded Heroes Fund. Uh, Jeremy Staff Foundation is going to be there on stage as well. They're, um, they're educating the public um, as well as the, uh, the Kern Veterans uh, Society. And they're educating the public on the tragedy of veteran suicide and the rate of veteran suicide. And uh, so we're really excited to have Jeremy Stat. Um, uh, get on and, and talk about that. And we hope to help raise some funds for the Wounded Heroes and for Jeremy Stats Foundation. And by the way, the uh, active military and kids 16 and under uh, are free, free admission. Oh, that's great. That's, that's very cool. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I hope that uh, everybody listening to the podcast is able to get there because I know it's going to be a great uh, expo. We got a lot of good information, uh, a lot of great classes there. Again, um, going to have to get that cardboard cut out for myself. All right, uh, <laughs> Brian and, and Darren, again, thank you, and uh, we'll be talking to you later. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care, everyone. That'll wrap up the interview. I want to thank Darren and Brian again for coming on and spending some time with me and, and talking about the uh, the expo that's coming up. If you want to email me directly, you can do so at rob at prepcast.info. You can follow us on Twitter at prepcast, like us on Facebook at preparedness podcast. And if you're looking to find us on the internet, you will find us at thepreparednesspodcast.com. Until next time, folks, enjoy life, stay prepared, and be safe.